Let's go over the controls for conditional derivations, indirect derivations, and writing your own show lines in Logic 2010. So let's try uh, 14 here. Okay, as always, press enter to start yourself a new line and you show, show conclusion. Now, the conclusion we're trying to show is a conditional, so it's always a good idea to start a conditional derivation. You can start your conditional derivation in, in at least two ways. You can right click and say, assume for CD, and that'll generate this line for you. Press enter, and it will give you the, your assumption for conditional derivation, and now you can show consequent and that will give you your show line. You could have just typed those out. So if you're a fast typer, assume for PD, show consequent. For me, that's faster, however you prefer to do it. Okay, so now we've got our uh, show line. We're gonna try to show not Q. Because this show line is not a conditional, the automatic move here is to assume for indirect derivation the opposite of it. So now we've got Q as our assumption, and we're gonna to try to generate a contradiction using Q. So line four and premise one, give us a modus ponens. Right now I'm just seeing what I've got and trying things out with it. Now on line five, uh, sorry, line two and premise two, I can also do modus ponens. And on line five and six, I can do an indirect derivation because five and six contradict each other. So I've generated my contradiction that I was looking for, and now I've shown not Q. And now line three, that show line is available for use. In this case, what I've got available for is showing that my conditional derivation worked. Okay. So let's do one more. In this case, one where we have to write our own show line. So, okay. It's always show conclusion. And because it's a conditional, we'll assume for conditional derivation and try to show the consequent. Okay, now, uh, oh right, and because this is, we've written a show line that's not a conditional, we're going to assume for indirect derivation. Now, there's not much we can do with, so all I've got available here, the only available lines I have are line two and line four. And there's not much I can do with line two and line four to get to interact with this at all. In this case, I'm kind of stuck. I'm stuck where I am. What it would be nice to have is the antecedent of this conditional of premise one. If I had the antecedent of this, then I could get this conditional, if not R, then not S, and I could do something with that. So what I have to do is write my own show line. I have to start a show line of my own and say, well, what do I want? I want this thing. So that's what I'm going to try to show. Now, before we've always been typing in this middle column, to write, start your own show line, you're gonna type in this column. Now you can right click and you get this drop down menu. You can click show and then just type it out. Q then not not S. Okay, that's one way of doing this. So, and then if I press enter, that gives me my show line. Uh, another way of doing this is you can just type it. You can just, uh, so just go into this box and say show Q and then the keyboard shortcut for the conditional is control shift C and then not not S and that will similarly generate me a nice show line. Okay, so at least two ways I just showed you of writing your own show line. And you don't have to justify a show line. The show line is a goal that you set for yourself. You don't have to prove that that's an okay goal. You just set yourself the goal. 
Now, because the goal, we've written a show line that's a conditional, we say, assume for conditional derivation, show the consequence. Well, we can do that. We can say uh, to double negation, and now we've got a direct derivation. Seven, sorry, line eight is our direct derivation. Now we've, on line seven, we've shown the consequent follows from assuming the antecedent. So we've got our conditional derivation. Okay, so now we've got if Q then not not S, we've shown it. Uh, we set our own goal and then we achieve that goal by showing that if you assume Q, then you can get not not S given the available lines we had above. So now we can use line five and premise one in a modus ponens and uh, get not R then not S. Line four and line 11, we do another modus ponens. So we use this not R, plug it in here and get not S. And now we've got our contradiction, right? So we've got S up here and not S up here. So uh, in the indirect, to, what, what we want to do is say line two and line 12, indirect derivation. When you're doing this indirect derivation thing, you need to, now you need to use the repeat rule. So if I just say line two, line 12, indirect derivation, that will give me an error that says two is not within the current subderivation. So what I want to do instead is line two space repeat space 12 indirect derivation, and that will work. So when you're doing this ID, that's when you need to use the repeat rule. Okay, so now we've done our indirect derivation on the assumption that S we have shown R using this indirect derivation. So on line three, we've successfully done a conditional derivation. Now, uh, we'll have to talk more about exactly when it's a good idea to write your own show line, but keep in mind that this is always a possibility. And given that this is a possibility, you've now got the skills. So using conditional derivations, direct derivations, and writing your own show lines, you can write, I believe that you've got all the skills that you need to complete derivations up to uh, 1.0.4. Uh, so the first 40 derivations or so are now within your abilities, or at least you've got all the tools you need to figure out how to do these.